being very picky guys i'm trying to debone here and i don't want to waste one ounce of meat i mean i'm just i get it all because it's all gonna grind up anyway my thoughts are i don't want to waste it and this is the first this is the first hind quarter that we I'm just trying to think if I'm running my knife around just anywhere, there's any little giblets of meat. And we made two nice roasts and already. we just cut two good roasts. And we made, I think, about eight or nine packs of little deer steaks and a pack of ten tenderloins. Yeah. There we go. Oh! And so do I need to wrap that or are you cutting that up? Nope, this is all just going to go up into... That's some nice meat. Look how dark. Look at, the, look at it. Just that's beautiful. We're gonna we're gonna make deer burgers out of this. I'm telling you. We've had this on ice now for about uh, what do you say? About 36 hours, probably. And it is so cold. My hands, I can't even feel them. I think I have to run some warm water over them. That's gonna make some fine deer burgers right there now. We try to get rid of anything that's, any sinew or anything like that. I try to take all that out of there. Kind of tough when I can't feel my fingers. All right. Look at the color, look at the beauty of that. Woo! Deer roast, deer meat is dark usually, isn't it? It is, it's, it's perfect. Guys, look how dark and rich this meat is. It's, a, it's good deer meat. Uh, it's darker than most beef is. Uh, it's all totally organic. Um, these deer, or this one, has literally fattened itself for the last month on our collards and, uh, and our greens. Uh, this is the bottom ham hock that I cut off on this thing. We're going we're gonna to debone this and uh, take and, um, if I can keep hitting the bone there, we're going to cut this up into uh, pieces for... You know grinding up but that's just beautiful i'm telling you they ain't you can't beat that right there and people talk about well i can't eat venison because venison has a strong taste well the deal is venison is just like beef if you feed a if you feed a cow all grass the meat has a weird taste to it if you feed it all grain it's nothing but fat and greasy so a deer is a lot like a cow in a lot of sense. It depends on what he eats as to the taste of the meat. Uh, for the best tasting beef, you want a cow that's raised on grass, finished on a little bit of organic grain just to give it that good marbling, and that's it. It's got just enough fat in it to make it really tasty. Uh, the problem with deer in the south here is we don't have any grain around here. So these deer feed predominantly on greenery in the woods and this time of the year they're they're gorging on acorns and acorns carry with them a lot of tannins and these tannins uh, transfer over into the meat a lot of times if you get a deer that's been eating a lot of acorns he can have a gamey taste to him but these deer have a mixture of where we're at here we have the greens we have uh, uh, the acorns we have the ryegrass. We've got all the greenery in the woods that they can feed off of. Persimmons. They have the persimmons because that helps to sweeten it up. Uh, we've got pear trees that they can get to occasionally. Things like that that just sweetens it up. Gives them that little bit of sweetness that they need. And the meat is just literally phenomenal. It doesn't have that gamey taste. Now, if you run him with a dog and you get his adrenal glands pumping in his body and then you shoot him... And rigor mortis sets in in 55 seconds, you know, because he just stiff as a board time you shoot him. Yeah, the meat's going to be stirred up and it's going to have a, a, a gamey taste to it because his adrenal glands has been pumping through his body. This, a deer like this that just walks straight out of the woods, don't know anything's going on. No loud pop from a gun to freak it. It's just standing there. You shoot it with a crossbow, it makes no noise. Next thing the deer just knows is, wham, something's wrong. It tries to run and it can't. And it dispatches it very quickly, very calmly, 
and the meat doesn't take on all that gamey taste like it does when you're shooting it with a gun or running it with a dog or something to that nature. So that's why our deer meat really doesn't taste bad at all. Plus it's been sitting soaking in ice water. All right, look at that. That ice water does something to it too. Well, yeah, it helps to pull a lot out. Now, usually I'll put a little bit of uh, uh, salt in with it. I didn't do that this time. Um, the blood comes out. You don't have all that bloody... Right, and this is um, this this here is is in really good shape. Now we try to cut this a lot. Of this is called silver skin. I try to pull a lot of that off, even though we're going to be grinding it. I'm I'm always still conscious of that stuff being in there. I'll run my knife on, kind of like filleting a fish. You know, you just cut that stuff off of there. Some very very good meat here, guys. Okay, when it comes to cutting a roast off of a, like a hind quarter like that, I go just above the knuckle on the shank and I cut into it. The bone is right there. I cut across, kind of diagonally in behind it here until I get to the bone. I don't want to stick to the paper. That's the thing about dry meat. Okay, I am to the bone all the way around it. Now I don't have a bandsaw. I have to use a, uh, a regular hand cutting meat saw. And I, the blade I have for mine is very aggressive. So it makes, sometimes it makes it a little bit difficult. So I have to kind of drag it backwards to to get it back out of that groove. There we go. And you keep that one specifically for meat. That's yeah, that's, not a, used. that's a strictly a meat saw. Used anywhere else. Nope, it's not used anywhere for nothing else. And the piece you've got in your hand we're gonna there use we go. for... That will cut sausage meat out of sausage that. Sausage meat. Now some people, uh, some people smoke them and that's perfectly fine. And our, our crock pots are not large crock pots because Wanda and I you know, we just got the smaller ones. So I don't like to cut a really big roast. So we cut ours maybe two inches thick like this. That seems to be what works best for us. And this would do a lot better if it was chilled a little more, but we had it on ice and it didn't, you know, it stayed kind of a little bit, I guess call it flexible. I like to make sure I keep it pretty uniform all the way around. And it's not that the knife is dull, because <laughs> the knife is not dull. No, it's pretty sharp. <laughs> it's really sharp, but I'm, I'm trying to... He's trying to be very careful so we don't have fingers and... Yeah. Woo! My hand, I have to run some warm water on my hand occasionally because it just gets where I can't feel it. Some people use a sawzall for this, and I have one, and I have the blade to cut with it. I just do it the old fashioned way. Let me get that little bit of skin cut there. There we go. Flip it. Trying to get it over. Now, this is a look at that roast. Nice small roast. That's what one that I like. There's just two of us. For us, we don't see any need in. If you had a bandsaw, you could cut that into steaks. Oh, if I had a bandsaw, I could cut it into steaks, yeah. Could, yeah, that would make some awesome steaks right there if you had a bandsaw. But we're making roast yeah. and ground beef, you, <laughs> or ground deer. <laughs> yeah, you do what you have to do. I mean, if we had a bandsaw, we could probably cut a lot more cuts than we are making. But we don't have one, so we do the next best thing. Now, next thing I'm going to do here... I'm trying to, I always try to clean up my meat as I go along if I see anything on it. Um, 
I'm gonna cut another roast because we'll get two out of this hind quarter here, I believe. I go till I hit the bone and then just go right over it and And there's only one bone in it, and it's small. It's a small bone. Yeah, it's not large. I get this thing so picked up here where I can... Makes it a little easier to cut Flip through. it over. That is just gorgeous meat. And one of these roasts will feed Danny and I, what, maybe six Ooh. meals? Oh, a bunch of meals, because Wanda and I, we don't, we don't just gorge when we eat. You know what I mean? We try to... Eat proportionately. Eat proportionately, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. there we go. That's pretty awesome. Now let's see if we can't find that bone in there. Ah, come on. If you buy one of these blades, don't buy one that's as, as aggressive as mine is. I used to use this cutting up cows and cow bones are so hard I bought an aggressive one so um, we could use this I could use one that's not quite so aggressive but and I'll go back and take my knife and clean off where the saw maybe left a little ground up bone and stuff like that there we go now two beautiful state of roast roast look at that let me get this out of the way right here two awesome roasts Look at that. And then we've got... I got this. I'm going to just chop up for cube steaks to be ground up into uh, ground deer burgers. And that's a we'll little just lot. Deer, we'll just debone it for that. Yeah. Now, technically, this could be a roast. If you wanted this to be a roast, yeah. this could be just a big roast. That could be a roast. That could be a shank roast. You know I mean? You could use it a lot of different ways, but this... We, we want roast and we want... Burger. Brown burger. So those two pieces over there need to be burger. Yep. And we're going to wrap this twice. I'm not going to just wrap it once. I'm going to wrap it this way. I'm going to take another piece. Okay, this is what we have here in the shop. I get a good size because this is a roast. Yeah, this is why we have a separate room set aside just for doing this. And that way it covers the ends again because the ends don't get as much coverage as the middle. Now you could you could vacuum seal this if you wanted. Yeah, a lot of people do. And it does extend the life, but I'll assure you this meat ain't gonna last. Less than six months. Less than six lasts. months. We won't make it six months here at Deep South. No. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to write on it. And when it freezes, I take um, one gallon bags and I'll put two of these roasts slid down in a one gallon bag. And I always put the date that it was done. And we killed the deer on Christmas. So I'm putting Christmas date. Um, it's double wrapped, then once it freezes, it'll go in a Ziploc bag, and I just take out as needed. So there'll be two in one gallon Ziploc bag. We have the meat off the bone, and it's probably close to 10 pounds, and sorry about this fluorescent light making a weirdness over it, but we're fixing to start grinding. Um, a lot of people asked about the gr grinder. It is made by Cabela's. All right, to start with, we're going to use the 3 16th plate and run it through it and grind it one time. Then we're going to come back, swap out to the smaller plate because we don't like big chunks in our meat. And we'll run it a second time with the smaller plate. We have these stainless warmer trays, pans, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we use stainless with just about everything in here if we can possibly use it.
we got this deer bones for broth. This is the both front shoulder bones and the rear hind quarter bones. We left a little bit of meat on them. We're going to make broth out of this. We just have so much going on right now. We don't have time to do it today. So we're going to put them in the freezer and we're going to make some bone broth in the very near future out of the deer bones. This is about as organic as you're going to get. Well, this is some awesome looking meat. Probably close to 10 pounds. We're going to weigh it as soon as we get through the second um, uh, running. And we run the second time. And we'll weigh it as we wrap it. That's nice. That's nice. And this deer meat, it's got some fat in it. Yeah. You're not getting that at Walmart. You're not going to get that kind of meat at Walmart. We've got this done. What we're going to do is take this plate out and add this one. And we're going to redo This is it. a 1 8 plate here. The other one was a 3 16th. This is a 1 8th. We're going to redo it again. And then we're going to rerun it. But then we rerun it this time, guys. Oh. We are going to... We're going to do something different. We don't have pork fat to go in this and uh, lard that we made last year in August and it's still good nothing wrong with it it's still sealed we're gonna smell of it of course before we add it to our meat but we're gonna try since we don't have pork fat adding some lard to it mixing it up and rerun it again to add a little bit of fat this is some good stuff here the funny thing about our grass-fed pork that we had was when this lard gets on your hand, you can wash it off with warm water. You don't even need soap. Yeah, it, it washes really easily. Yeah. So we're hoping for a good cleanup today. <laughs> yeah. You know, since it's rendered down, I wonder if the uh, the consistency of it, you wouldn't have to have as much lard since it's already rendered. Well, that's why we're only doing one jar to this. One jar to 10 pounds. Yeah. Because I'm looking at that. That's about 10 pounds, I would think. Yeah. We'll know in a little bit, but it's close. If you wanted to be technical, you can go measure and all this. Measure the pot, uh, the pan, then measure it with the weight in it and get pretty close. But you don't eat, The lard don't have that, what people call a piggy taste. No. It don't, it don't have that. It don't, even, it don't even smell like that. This was some good lard. This stuff is fine. Okay guys, we've got three quarters of a pint in here. We don't want to overdo it, but um, we want to kind of just like test it. Our theory was we could take it and mash it in with this and Freeze kind of, your hands off. Ooh, is it cold. Was to just kind of work it in. Now this may be the worst mistake we've ever made or it might be the best, the best <laughs> that we've ever done. I don't know. I can tell you this. I don't have any feeling in my hands right now. It's you already... swap hands. And we're going to run it through the grinder again. So it's going to mix it even more. But you want it mixed somewhat because you it don't is, want it. It is sticky. Sticky, sticky. Yeah. And the deal is going to be we put no seasoning in it. We don't want any seasoning. This is no. mainly just venison. I got for, swap hands here. <laughs> for um, use for burgers in casseroles things like that so we didn't want to put sausage seasoning or anything like that in it no we just needed a little bit of fat so that the meat doesn't dry out when we're cooking it i'm gonna transfer some back and forth just a good mix and we're probably gonna need that other i think piece we're gonna have jar. to have the other piece of a jar yep one jar per 10 pounds looks like it's gonna be a good ratio all right we added another quarter of a jar so one whole pint to 10 pounds he's about to get it mixed enough we think we're I think, I think i'm about to get there we're going to start grinding the second time and you can see it like you would if you'd have put pieces of pork the, in the there. meat is so cold it's made the pork the pork has made the lard turn hard yeah so it, yeah, we're hoping that that's a good thing yeah all right you want to show them how to wash your hands when okay y'all see i ain't I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna show y'all this. This is lard, you know. I'm gonna smear it all over my hands, you know. I mean, you see, I'm here with it. This is the difference in grass-fed pork. I'm gonna show you guys something. No dishwashing soap whatsoever on my hands. 
Now I'm gonna go straight over here. There's water, there's one to turn the water on for me. This is just hot water straight out of the thing. I'm gonna show you something. This is what our ancestors knew. This is what they knew that we didn't know. My hands are not greasy. That's coming from? Straight, my hands are not greasy at all. They're completely clean. I mean, I can wipe them off. This is where our ancestors knew that if, I mean, most people feed pigs uh, feed Junk. that makes it fat. They try to make them fat. My hands are perfectly dry. I mean, not greasy. Not greasy at all. Look, I mean, they don't even hardly slide on one of the. I mean, that's, that's awesome. And when you run it a second time, lots of times you have to use the plunger more. This is the size that we like for ground beef right here. We don't like the old big pieces coming out like you get from the local stores. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Now that, my friend, is a good looking consistency right there. Like I said, you have to use a plunger you on this. You gotta use a plunger on this. Look at that. I'm telling you what, that right there. We're gonna cook some burgers in a little bit. We, that's our lunch. Well, it's gonna be almost dinner time because it's almost 10 o'clock now. We've been going since early this morning, so we gotta get out there and get some metal put on, but we gotta get our food took care of. Wanda's gonna be making a burger to see how this works. Yeah. You're not gonna get that at a grocery store. Don't compete with Walmart. No, Walmart can't even hold a candle to this. All right. Okay. All right. I just wanted to gotta move it back a little bit. That's probably That's probably two pounds. Two right pounds there. right yeah. there. Okay, warm fingers. Warm fingers, see? She's just gonna go straight to the water. That's it. That's it. All right, we have this um, scales, and you want to put a plate down. It is on zero with the plate on it. Then, I've already weighed this, so I know I've got it about right. You want to put your meat on, and we're at one pound. So Danny and I do one pound increments, and then I have the wax paper here, the tape, and a pen. We're going to just wrap it. We're going to see how many pounds of ground deer that we get. This is what we ended up with out of one deer. We've got the bones in the freezer to make bone broth, of course, but we have one of the tenderloins. There's two in there. We're going to cook those together at some point in the future. We have nine packs of little steaks. I hammer these out and make them flat and fry them. They're awesome. We ended up with four large roast. And Papa, huh? how many packs of ground deer? Well, we missed it a little bit. We said 10 pounds, but I think they ended up being like 17 and a half pounds. 17 wrapped packs of ground deer. And y'all, three quarters of a pound to go cook. So we're headed in as soon as I get through writing on 16 other packs and we're going to cook some deer meat. All right guys, stay with us. I'm, uh, we had 17 pounds of meat, 17 and three quarters basically. And we added one pint of lard and we want to know, is this going to work? What's it going to taste like? Is it going to cook out? Is it going to be too dry? We're headed into the kitchen. I'm going to take you along on how I cook the venison. We're going to make some hamburgers just to see how it works. I've got my stainless pot here. I've got cast iron over here, but when I'm making burgers, I like um, my stainless. And I'm using one teaspoon of lard in the bottom because I don't want these to stick. Um, mainly I just kind of coat the bottom like most people would spray Pam this is what I do in order to keep them from sticking 
it may not even take all of this. It's just going to take just a little bit in my skillet to keep this from sticking. So let's say maybe a quarter of a teaspoon spread around on the bottom. And I'm just going to divide it in half and make two burgers. Now you can go ahead and season your burgers or whatever you want, but I want to be able to taste the meat and I want to know is it good, how does it work. So all I'm going to do is add salt and pepper on top instead of throughout the meat. So, and this is on a medium, it's on six. And this is two good sized burgers because this was over a half a pound. It was almost three quarters of a pound of meat. All right, this is in real time, guys. Showing you what we're doing. And I'm not going to make you sit here 10 minutes of cooking, but I want to show you the cook process and it's not sticking because I put a little bit of lard in there. And we want that to continue. So we're going to just let it sit for about two or three more minutes. And then we'll be back when we flip. Well, it has been about four minutes. Um, in the meantime... Okay, we're getting it good and brown. Uh, that looks good. We're going to add our salt and pepper to this side. There's nothing, I mean, you can see the skillet has no fat, no nothing in the skillet. Um, it seems to be holding together well. And it seems to be cooking well. I've turned the skillet down to about five. I've got it on five right now. And we're just going to see um, good and moist. We're going to see how this works. I'll come back in about four or five more minutes. Okay, we're going to flip. I've still got a little bit. Um, I don't want to press too much but I wanted to see if any what kind of juices were coming out so I think what I'm gonna do is just let them sit on this hot skillet till we're ready to eat here we are back in the house uh, Miss Wanda has cooked up the deer burgers I guess the thing to see now is I'm gonna ask you how did they cook out they did awesome I showed you beginning to end I clipped it off as long as it was just cooking but there was no moisture in the pans whatsoever um, about four minutes on one side flipped it four minutes on the other and I just let it sit in a hot pan so until we got ready to eat we have potatoes here I opened a jar of our potatoes that we canned and I air fried them make sure it's not too hot I air fried them french fries quick easy and I got ketchup and mustard for my fries and stuff, but they're good. Taste your meat. Okay, this is the test to see how the deer meat did with the uh, canned lard. Yeah, I hadn't tasted it yet. And I only put salt and pepper so that we can taste this and see if it... What do you think? I've got my opinion, but I'm going to say I can wait. I know what it ranks right up there with. It's as good as a lamb. It tastes to me almost like a good steak. It It has that taste. I, yeah, I guess if, if you had to say if it had a taste, 
It's more the taste of a grilled steak. I mean, almost like a, a beautifully grilled steak taste. And, it, and to me, it's like it's got lamb. I mean, I taste that lamb taste. Uh, and it's not grilled, so... No, but, it's not grilled. But it has that taste almost like a grilled steak. I, I, can, I can only imagine what it would be on a grill. Oh, yeah. Smoked a little. But this, guys... This is fine right here. It cooked out great. It held together. Now, one thing Danny was worried about was the patty holding together. Yes. And, well, I just messed it up, but it held together. It made a good patty. You saw it in the um, previous clip. It held together. It went, um, I mean, I can't say nothing bad about this. It's well, that was one reason for us grinding it twice. When you grind something just once, it has a tendency to want to fall apart. Yeah. But when you grind it twice, it really mixes the fats and the meats in together. It cuts the fibers down to where they, they mesh better, and it stays together as a patty. I can pick mine up. I mean, it stays together like a piece of meat. It's not like a hamburger piece of a hamburger is going to fall all to pieces on you. Now, mine come apart because I done started cutting it. She stabbed a fork it. in the middle of it. Yeah, broke it. Uh, but, it, I mean, but, it's tender in the middle. It's not overdone. Um... Even though it kind of looked like brown on the outside, it browned the outside, but it didn't burn it. No, it didn't yeah. dry it out. You know? It's not dry. Uh, the one thing I will say is it's a touch bit chewy. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little bit like that, but I like that. That's not something that I don't like. That's, um, it's like eating a steak, like you said. you got to mm -hmm. chew it just a little bit. I would um, rank it up with the best steak I've ever had. Probably. And it has nothing but salt and pepper on it. Yeah, this is a deep stout. This was there. 17 pounds of, of venison. Mm -hmm. One jar of home rendered lard. From our From place. our hog here at the place. They were raised on grass mainly. They were mainly grass fed. Uh, they did have some sugar cane and stuff like that. But <laughs> I mean, peas. Peas and things. Uh, <clears throat> But it, there's no greasy texture to it, mm -mm. none whatsoever. Uh, so that ratio is something we're going to remember and write down. At least 15 pounds to one pint. 15 to 17, because we only, the, the pint didn't weigh a pound. No. So I'm going to say the 17, we had 17 and three quarters pounds of meat. I'm going to say the three quarter was the lard. Yeah, I would say so. And so about 17 pounds of meat to one jar of lard, uh, home rendered that is. I think is a good ratio. Uh, and this deer cost us? This deer cost me right now at this moment. <laughs> the price, the, of, the an price of an arrow and a broadhead. Now we may eventually find it. It's laying out there somewhere I'm sure. We haven't spent a lot of time looking because we don't have a lot of time. But um, this is awesome. if we find the arrow and the broadhead, it cost me absolutely nothing other than time and time and greens and and a field full of greens a field full of greens yeah and uh and the, and the you know the effort it took to cook it something like that but uh, I'm, I'm a i'm a so approximately I'm a winner in this one four roast the tenderloins the eight or nine packs of steaks that i have the back straps yeah. the back strap and 17 and three quarters pounds of ground plus the bones to make bone, bone broth, broth in the future um that is enough how, uh, approximately, we were trying to figure. We were trying to figure a dollar amount on this, and I'm thinking, you know, it's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of meat. At least between a hundred and twenty-five. Because it's all organic. Yeah. There's nothing here that's not organic. It's all organic. We figured at least a hundred and twenty-five plus in meat yeah. for the price of an arrow and a broadhead. That's yeah. pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Um, so. You know, guys, we just want to do another video about, you know, about using the, the lard with the venison. And um, I think that it's a, I think it's a good deal. So you might want to try it if you, if you have some and you kill a deer. Now, this was a young deer. This was a first-year deer. She had had little ones because we could look at her bag and tell it. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, she had had them in the past, this past summer, I'm guessing. And, um... You know, so she was a one, one and a half year old doe. She wasn't real big, probably weighed a hundred pounds. Um, but that's that's what that's the size you really want. So. so this was good eating. 
So guys, this is, uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the, uh, the processing of the deer and all that has to go on with it uh, and, and the, the, the making of the deer burgers. Now you can season these any way you want. We just chose not to because we might use them in a lot of different recipes. But I think it's a win for us here at Deep South. We will be doing this from now on. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.